Hello, everybody, and welcome to Educations. I'm your host, Phil Strunk, and I am joined today by two educators up in New York, uh, Gary and Chris. Gary and Chris, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure. Hi. Um, my name is Gary Armida. I'm an English teacher at North Rockland High School here in Rockland County, New York. I've been in the classroom for 21 years and last six years as the English coordinator as well, so a different kind of role. And uh, yeah, enjoying it. Great. And I'm uh, Chris Felicello, assistant superintendent here in North Rockland, a uh, colleague and friend of, of Gary's. And um, this is my 25th year in education. I've been a physical education teacher, a coach, a principal, uh, an athletic director, assistant superintendent for human resources. And now my current position is assistant superintendent for educational services. So really glad. It's, a, it's an honor to be here tonight, Phil, and really uh, happy that you had us. Yeah, I, I was really thrilled whenever you were whenever you opened the opportunity. One of the things that that I found so cool is is the relationship that you have. That somebody from central office and somebody from the classroom have been able to to bond and, and create this great voice for education. Where did that all originate from? Yeah, you know, Gary and I, um, when we started to work together, we really realized I think pretty early on that mm -hmm. we were aligned philosophically. And as we shared ideas and we talked about um, different directions that we wanted his department to go and the district to go, um, we realized that we're really on the same page. And, and at that point, he knows a heck of a lot more about English than I do and about <laughs> the department members. So I kind of you know, turned it over to him and, and trusted him. And he's done some amazing things with the department. Yeah, I will. A lot of it started over fantasy baseball, too. That's true. You know, we That's found true. A <laughs> common bond, and, and you know, you just started to develop a friendship. And Who won this year? Fantasy baseball. He finished in first, so I guess that's yeah. for the world yeah, now. Yeah. So, nice job. Get that on. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, the, having someone in Chris's position to just give trust, and yeah. you know, and then I felt like I got to earn this trust, and it made me work even harder. And you know, I, he let me take risks, and and I would say, Chris, I have this idea. I think this will go well, and you know, I never had someone just say, Yeah, go for it, and you know, I got your back on this, and. You know that relationship has you know solidified over the years even further so yeah and i think that's so cool what you just said he he lets you take risks uh, so frequently we feel like we're going to be we punished or maybe not we personally but there's a lot of people that, that don't want to go and take that extra step go that extra mile because they're worried about what if i fail uh, but you know again whenever you have the leadership and whenever you have somebody that's willing to take those risks it creates it creates a lot of power and a lot of innovation. So you know, kudos to you both. You both write this blog, uh, teaching the admin. What's the what's the purpose behind that blog for people that that haven't read it yet? You know, it's really for us an opportunity to share our stories, to share all the things that we're trying to do. And as you said, uh, you know, it, it's one thing to encourage risk. I almost feel like if you if you're not taking risks, you're not doing things differently. If you're not trying something new, mm -hmm. then you're then you're failing. You know, mm -hmm. If you try something, and you put yourself out there and it doesn't go well. OK, well, I learned from that and I move on. But if, you, if you're doing the same old, same old year after year, um, you, you're not making any progress. And really, with our blog, we you know, we just one day we sat in this office right here and said, hey, you know, let's do some writing. Let's try something. And um, we started to do it, started sharing our ideas. We're both pretty passionate about homework. That's something we've written about quite a bit, about grading, about relationships, about student voice and and just talk. You know, just really tried to share our story, our thoughts. Um, again, the wins, the losses, all the things we did well, <laughs> the things we didn't do well. So. Right. And I think that's what it was. I felt like I was coming to a point in my career where I wanted to share more and I knew I failed a lot. And but I've learned a lot. And all those failures kind of made me who I am and someone who's willing to take a risk. And I just I loved writing. And, you know, I, I had written sports before and. It was just I said, you know, I'm thinking of writing this. And Chris was like, no, I want to do that, too. And so that's I was, was pretty born. impressed when I found out Gary was on the front page of the USA Today more than once. It was Whoa. <laughs> article. So I was like, that's pretty awesome that about you. Yeah, he was, was, was very humble about it. But it yeah. Cool. Oh, man, I love those shameless plugs right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All about them. So whenever you so now um, that you have have started to blog and you're writing more, you know, I found it to be a pretty uh pretty big cathartic release sometimes. Do you feel that same way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've, you know, this is something Gary's taught me. The best writing comes when you're authentic and when you, you know, kind of expose yourself and, and you're, you're willing to be honest and open. And I've, I've written about some things um, about my family life, my dad, a, a complicated relationship with him about things that I wish I could take back as an educator. And, um, 
I often find that that those pieces are the best pieces, and it also mm-hmm. um, the people that I work with see me as more human when I when I do that and kind mm-hmm. of figure out that yeah, I'm, I'm not just an administrator that's that's you know in this position, but I'm somebody that's just like everybody else that wants to do the best I can for our kids, best I can for my family, best I can in life. Right. And I mean, that's exactly what I feel. You use the word, you know, cathartic, I believe. And, and mm-hmm. that, that's definitely the word I would say, you know, you know, as a teacher that you go through these phases and you're like, oh, my, I did you know, a lousy job. I did this. And, and you go and you sit down and you write and just things start to flow and it makes you feel better. And, and you start to say, hey, I did that. And maybe I can help someone out, someone else out, you know, do something better or think a little differently. So yeah, just being open, honest, and, you know, sometimes we angry right when we're really passionate <laughs> about an issue, That's you know, true, yeah. a lot of our homework ones are pretty much angry rights, <laughs> yeah. but um, they're great but rights. Like for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so going off that that line, you know, one of the big goals of education is to be able to give people some some practical tips. What are some tips that you have for somebody that wants to get into the education blogging sphere? I, I'm going to go ahead and, and say it's a lot different than what you're going to read on, you know, maybe like a BuzzFeed, uh, what kind of pair are you sort of post, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, the first thing is just, um, just doing it. You know, I had a meeting today with a group of our assistant principals, and we talked about some of the things we are proud of accomplishments in our lives. Um, and then we also talked about things that we wanted to accomplish in our lives. And, and we all pretty much came to the realization that anything that you want to do, the most difficult thing is that first step. What's the mm-hmm. first step in, in, in taking it? And if you wanted to start a blog or you wanted to start writing, just start doing it. Just start putting yourself out there. Mm-hmm. At that, I mean, really, that's what it is. Putting yourself out there, being willing to see your voice you know, out there in writing and be willing to do things like this. Like, honestly, so give me a keyboard and I'm good. Being <laughs> on this stuff. This is out of my comfort zone. Well, you're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, be put yourself out there because there is the thing. Once you put yourself out there, you are seen differently and, and you have to be willing to, you know, accept that and own that and say, this is who I am and this is what I believe in. So, um, and it's funny, yeah. I used to I used to be a coach and a you know play sports way back in the day. And I remember all those butterflies before mm-hmm. a game. Gary's a coach as well, and it's funny. Um, I didn't get those butterflies again until I started putting posts out, and they're about to be published. And it's like that I'm nervous that night, and I wake up, and mm-hmm. you're wondering how are people going to react? Are people going to think I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm a poor writer, or people not going to like my ideas, or whatever it may be? Was I too open? Was I too honest? So it's it's, it's interesting. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say I consider your blog to be incredibly successful. So what are what are some ways that that now that you've written this blog, it's impacted both your crafts and education, both as a teacher and as and as somebody in upper level administration? Yeah, I mean, the feedback that I get from people um, in terms of, you know, how what they took from the articles and what they didn't has helped me to kind of see things from a different perspective. And some of the things that I've written about, it, it's been it's really helped me to reflect on some of the things that we do. For instance, we, last year we did a, a Twitter challenge in our district and I was able to cover some classes and, and go into to some different teachers' classes and, and teach them for, for them. And I did some first grade classes and I wrote a piece <laughs> about teaching first grade. And I'll tell you, Phil, I am shocked at the job that first grade teachers do and how- My wife is a first grade teacher. She can attest to that. <laughs> They're my heroes, I'll tell you. I mean, it is unbelievable. We were talking yeah. about it today with, with the teachers we, we, um, we worked with. So, you know, just kind of uh, that reflective piece, that-, that um, those conversations that it brings up, I've been able to deepen relationships with people because they see me differently because I've been able to write about who I am, not just see me standing up at a district, um, you know, PD session or open right. day or whatever it may be. Right. And for me, it's it's two. One, I'm able to sh- share better with my colleagues. I just feel once you put yourself out there, there's no restrictions on sharing. So <laughs> a lot more comfortable with that. And the conversations have gotten better and debates too, you know, the, I'll walk into a room. Hey, I read your piece. I disagree with a lot of it. And you know, you have a really good conversation. And you know, and it makes me think too. You know what? Maybe I could go that way. And then the other way for me, it's as a teacher, it's held me accountable. Like one time I texted Chris, I was like, I gotta be the teacher. Cause now like I have to live up to what I wrote. And mm-hmm. you know, it it has held me accountable to, you know, put it out there and then say, all right, I have to reach this. So it, it, that accountability piece has really helped me out too. Yeah, and, and now your your blog has blossomed, your ideas have grown, and, and you're getting ready to, to write a book, or you, you are writing a book that's getting ready to be published. Can you can you tell the viewers about that experience for you? 
Yeah, it's it's been uh, it's really you know it's it's been a whirlwind, and and we were um, you know put in contact by um, by a friend uh, Evan Rob, who I think you know with with Marlena Taylor Gross, who's who's founded um, Edgy Gladiators Publishing Company, and we had a, we had a conversation with her, and she was very interested in in, in us writing the book for her, and um, it's been such a great experience. We're really gonna you know. The, the, the fact of just formulating it and, and our concept is we would write a chapter on a topic that we're passionate about and, and kind of write it from an administrator's perspective, from a teacher's perspective. And then, you know, how can they come together to make this a reality? So, um, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, so psyched. And the, and the idea is you can't really make change in education if we're not working together. And, that, <laughs> and that's always been my thing, you know why not reach out to your admin to, and, you know, forge a relationship because we both need each other on this, you know, right. to make real sustained change. You know, I can do things in my classroom and can control that. But if I want to change the, the game for a lot of kids, we all have to work together as an organization, really. Absolutely. You know, I, I love that that partnership. Teamwork makes the dream work. So mm -hmm. um, can you give us some details? When when can we expect to see this book uh, coming out or, you know, maybe even a little bit of do you have any topics that you figured out that you definitely know these are going to be in the book right now? Yeah, I mean, we, we were thinking it's probably going to come out sometime late spring, early summer. And, um, you know, of course, we're, we have a chapter on homework, um, we, we have, you know, relationships, um, you know, the relationship between the administrator and the teacher and things you can do to build that trust. Um, you know, we, we, we're also doing a, a social emotional piece in, in the book. So, um, yeah, it, it's been uh, it's been exciting yeah. to kind of put it all together and um, something that we've really enjoyed. Yeah, it's been a great process, much different than blogging. You know, it's just that you would think it's just writing, you know, writing's writing. But when it's something that's going to be in a book, it just feels yeah, a little different. You know, it's the lifelong dream coming right. through as well. So, yeah, it's, it's been very exciting and has made me a better writer to just yeah. know. It, I can't explain that part of it. It's just more thoughtful and purposeful, I guess. With, yeah, with that, you know, right. Yeah. And, and thinking about how it. You know, we're blogging oftentimes we're putting out thoughts and ideas and but you know with a book it's like how can this benefit somebody how mm. can somebody take this and use it at a faculty meeting to do an activity how can a, a new student who's coming out of the you know out of college and going getting into the field how can they use this to benefit um, their teaching practices and, mm. and understanding that we are always better when we're together if mm. you're working with your administrator and and there's not that divide that sometimes I, I remember when I first got into administration some of my colleagues had said, oh, you know, they did this whole Darth Vader voice and, you know, oh, you know <laughs> the dark side, you know, and it's like, I, I don't see it as that. I see yeah. it as, as we're, we're together and um, you don't have those relationships and you don't see things from somebody else's perspective. You're really not going to um, you're not going to be successful. And it's easy for me. I'm sitting in my office, you know, and I can tell you all the theory and all these great ideas that are going to work. But unless I actually can bring myself back and talk to the people that are living it every day in the classroom with the kids and understanding all those challenges, then, um, then really my ideas are, are for naught. That's awesome. I love that. So yeah, now you've made me even more excited to read this book. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this spring, this summer and being able to dive into that and, and really take those things into consideration. I, I like that you address the whole, you know, welcome to the dark side sort of thing, because you know, I, I think you're right. I think there's a big perspective that once people leave the classroom and they think, and they go into an administration position, it's like, oh, like they're gone to us. No, they're doing something different to, to support students, you know? That's, exactly, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, and so with this book coming out and, you know, with, with the blog, you have also started a, a little Twitter chat. And so uh, we've made that the featured chat of the episode in our fun chat. What's uh, What are some of the details behind that? How'd that originate? And, uh, you know, if people wanna join in, how can they do that? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. and. Um, you know, I'm pretty new to Twitter. It's only been on like actually active the last year and a half. And one of the first chats that I that I was drawn to was was your chat, um, you know, wins and losses, because I just love that concept of you know what are some good things, what are some bad things, what have I learned from it. But anyway, have since you know gotten into that and actually did a, a professional development session after school uh, after school hours with with some teachers that were interested in Twitter and how they could maximize the potential of it to to um, you know help them in their craft and. Um, we started, I said, all right, well, we'll do a little chat as part of the, the session. And, you know, yeah. I started, you know, we made a hashtag up and I asked them questions and, you know, we kind of went through it. And then, you know, all of a sudden, like some people that we didn't know popped into the chat and it was, you know, <laughs> people from California and wherever it was. And they were like, oh, my God, this is so cool. 
And I said, well, you know, to continue the learning, if you guys want to set up a chat, I'll help you set it up and you can run this chat. And um, that's where NR Fun Chat was born. And, and you know, the first week I facilitated it for them and, and you know, and pushed it out. But since then, it's it's these um, young first year, second year teachers who are who are running this NR Fun Chat and have, have um, really made it, you know, a chat that I love coming to. And, and they do it every other Sunday at seven o'clock Eastern time. And um, they pick a different different topic each week. Um, you know, one week was physical activity in the classroom. Last week was, you know, a Valentine's theme. What are some things that you love about teaching and about students? So it's, um, I know Gary's there every week. Uh, yeah, kind of no, and, it's, and it's pretty cool because we're a pretty big district. So uh -huh. uh, there's a secondary person. I don't get to see a lot of our elementary schools that much. So today at the PD session, I walked in and I was like, Hey, you look for my Twitter chat, you know, so we, we started talking and you make those, you feel like, you know, someone already too. And, right. You know, I've, I've already borrowed some ideas that they've talked about. So that's that, awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and then, uh, and then one more opportunity to, to give some plugs here. Uh, chances are this episode will be coming out afterwards, but can you go ahead and, and talk about the ed camp coming up? You know, what does it take to organize an ed camp? And, and maybe just for people that are unfamiliar, what is ed camp? Yeah, so we, uh, Gary and I didn't know what it was. Last year, um, we were working with Angela Stockman, who's a, a writing okay. consultant. And I don't know if you know Angela. Yeah. Some excellent yeah. work. And, you know, we were picking her brain and she was talking about this whole ed camp thing. So, you know, we said, <laughs> we're going to run one. So <laughs> we decided that we were, you know, we were going to run this ed camp. We're That's gonna exactly how it happened. I totally and believe we that too. About it and we looked at each other and we're like, we're going to do it. We're going to run It's going to be awesome. You know? so, uh, <laughs> So we set up this and we ran it last year and it was, it was so much fun. It was, it, we had to put a whole team together. We had students that helped us with it. We had students, um, you, you know, performing uh, with music and, and a lot of great, you know, donations that the local businesses gave. And um, it was a huge success. And, and now this year, we, we just had a meeting with our team today to plan it out. And we have over 250 people signed up already and it's oh. still, you know, a month away. So we're like, oh boy, we got to get more food. So we're doing breakfast, <laughs> lunch, we're giving t-shirts, bags, all this. We're going to get more, order more mm -hmm. shirts, more bags. So, um, you know, we have all sorts of, of giveaways and i um, really excited about it. Yeah, it's a great day to just talk education. You know, people just come in. There's no preset agenda. People come in, they post topics that they want to talk about or facilitate. We make... Lauren and I, one of the team members, we make the board up with the schedule and then people decide, I'm going to go to that room for session one. And you just sit around and you talk and, you know, you really get a lot of good stuff out of it. Last year, you know, we had done a homework one, surprise, surprise, um, <laughs> you know, and, but there was a lot of good talk around there where I took a lot out of it. And we get to meet a lot of people yeah. from this area and, and also outside of our area, people from Massachusetts last year. Met a guy, Paul O'Neill, um, who mm -hmm. I had met at a different ed camp, who then came to our ed camp this uh, last year. He's coming again this year. So, you know, um, Joe Lloyd, who's a person that used to work in North Rockland, has come back and, and been able to connect with him. And just a lot of uh, a lot of local educators and also not so local educators. So it's it's I love it. It's I'm really looking forward to yeah. it again this year. It's a good day. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, best of best wishes as that comes up. That's going to be, that's going to be great. So, Hey, listen, we've been able to talk about your relationship and the importance of building that relationship between teachers and admin. Talked about your blog, talked about the impact of blogging on your craft, uh, your new book that's getting ready to come out, your chat and the ed camp. We are almost to the point where we're at the end of the show, which means it is time for our high fives. These are five questions totally unrelated to education, just to help the viewers get to know you a little better. All right. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and Gary, we'll let you go first on these and then we'll go over to Chris after it. Okay? okay. First question, does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes. Now yes. me? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like pineapple on pizza. Yeah. I'm with it. Oh. Okay with that. I like all kinds of pizza, so yes. Yeah. yeah I thought as two people from New York, you would, you would say no. <laughs> no, no. That hurts me. No. <laughs> any pizza is good. Yeah, any pizza is good. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that too. No ancho. Yeah. Uh, favorite kind of bagel? Um, cinnamon raisin. Mm. Salt. Really? Salt. Wow. Salt. And pizza. Pizza bagel. Pizza oh, bagel. Do you like pizza yeah. bagel bites? <laughs> bites, yeah. But I like a nice, you know, bagel and I make my own homemade pizza. Uh -huh. nice. <laughs> Best place to travel for a week. I know what your answer is going to be. Yeah. Um, that's a good question uh, that I've been to. Uh, your call. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll say California, without okay. a doubt, um, that I've been to, and dream would be Italy. 
That's cool. where I want to go for like years. <laughs> it, Disney, of course. I knew. I could have answered. Love that. Disney. Yeah. <laughs> LB I and I, we are we are offer, so. addicted to Disney. Yeah, love it. Uh, next one, favorite fruit juice. Whoa. Um, orange juice. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Gatorade. Michael Jordan's favorite flavor, Gatorade. So, <laughs> I'm old school on that. <laughs> See, these are the hard questions that need to be asked so frequently in the oh, argument. Yeah. Uh, I think I definitely know Gary's answer for this. I'll be curious to see what Chris says. Favorite sport? Baseball. Basketball. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering if the Michael Jordan reference was going to lead us yeah. to, to some basketball. <laughs> well, hey, listen, guys. I had a great time having you on the show. Before we sign off, are there any last bits of wisdom you want to share with the viewers? Now, I really appreciate the opportunity, Phil. I know we've connected um, – you know, online and, and really respect all the work that you're doing. So it was great to come and chat with you today. And, and so, as I said before, it's a true honor to be on your show. So thank you. And I want to say the same thing. Thanks so much for getting me to do this, first of all, and, um, you know, pushing it. And, you know, it was a really great experience. So thanks for doing it and keep doing what you're doing because it's helping a lot of people for sure. Great. Thank you. Well, uh, hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed watching Gary and Chris today. You can find their Twitter handles in the bottom. You can also find out details about their book, which is coming out. Be sure to get a copy of it. You are going to be in for a real treat, I think, uh, I think you've experienced today. If you enjoyed what you've seen in Educations today, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you were a friend or interested in being on Educations, you can very easily sign up by going to philstrunk.com slash contact. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.